I'm back. So yeah, anyways guys, finally back after my two week vacation. If my and yeah, I'm gonna review the conduit. So over my two weeks I figured out some stuff and what I'm gonna do. And after this there will be a video I'll be uploading about that. But anyways, as for now we're reviewing the conduit. And yes, you may have noticed this is on a much bigger TV because I went away for two weeks because I'm here at a cottage, so yeah. We got some logos there we gotta skip. Let's see if I can start. So yeah, this is the conduit. As a matter of fact, I don't even think you guys can hear it because this menu music is actually quite good. Tell you what, nah, I'm not gonna even bother. So yeah, this is the game. I left my guy's name as Mr. Ford. I don't think it's possible to change it, which kind of sucks. Well, you'd have to copy it, then I then I get a different friend code and everything. So yeah, got three different files. As you saw, my missions and campaign were both 100%. And it pretty much means the same thing. So you got new game here, or continue game, depending on where you are in the campaign. You got mission select, which allows you to go to, through any of the nine missions. And that's what it means by mission 100%. Like if you drop out during a mission, like at a checkpoint, which I actually thought was kind of cool, it'll, it will tell you like how far you are in that mission. Just kind of a nice little thing there. So yeah, you got nine missions. Each mission is about an hour long. I guess. Okay, so then you got multiplayer, which is the big thing. Options and extras. Okay, so how... Let's first talk, talk about the single player campaign. Hmm. So yeah, you got nine missions, not very long, and something I found that was kind of weird was, as you see beside the name of the mission, there's a, there's a two-digit number there. Which makes you think, okay, so there's obviously going to be ten missions, but nope, just nine. There's nine missions and no ending. And I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm just going to tell you, don't expect any sort of an ending for this game. Like, I heard that was going to end on a cliffhanger, but it's not cool. Not cool, high voltage. Not cool. I don't know. Let's go to... Let's just go here. Let's just show you off some stuff. Here's one of the very epic cutscenes. And, cut, and these cutscenes are very un, unskippable buttons. One thing I gotta say about the cutscenes in this game is I heard they're ultra cheese ball considering the story. It's aliens invade Washington, Washington D.C. Uh, yeah, whatever. But the thing about it is, yeah, I agree, they are 100% totally cheese ball. Yeah, at the same time, they are freaking epic. Like, I know you can hear that, but if you could hear it, you'd know how epic it is. Okay, so this is pretty much what the game is. Pretty straightforward, running gun gameplay. So in this mission, we gotta just shoot the missile tree, everything. And now, normally I'd like mention the controls or something, but I'm not gonna have to, because... Once you go into options, you have game options, which you can choose the difficulty, subtitles, hub placement, hub transparency, player running speed, which you can actually use to cheap out the game at times. Haha. -ha. Control options, sound options, video options. Video options are just brightness and sensor bar cal collaboration, which is nice that they threw that in. Sound options, pretty basic stuff. But the big winner here is the control options. So you got control layout. Which I really love how you can create a custom layout and put any button onto anything you want. Like, I only I think the only button that's the same as when I started has been next weapon and shoot. So yeah. I, you can also change the motion controls and everything, but then you got styles, which I I don't want to play styles because that will enter the gameplay. We remote dead zone dead zone, I think it's like like it will make this box appear in the center of the screen, and I think it means you can only shoot when you're inside, when your cursor is inside that box, which is kind of cool. So auto sensor cursor, turn while cursor is off screen, and rumble. Yeah, not gonna go into too details. They're very customizable. I'm sure other people will talk about it. 
you got mission stats here, which just tell you all your stats for the missions, like what weapons, like the general stats here for the mission, enemy stats, weapon stats, you know, stuff like that. And I'm going to quit because I'm not going to bother showing you all any of that, because it's pretty straightforward just running gun gameplay. Then there's multiplayer, which I know I will not be showing you, because I'm at a cottage and I don't get any freaking internet here, so... I can't even show you the multiplayer, which is kind of sad, because I really want to tell you guys what I think. But I'm just going to tell you what I think now. Okay, get ready for this, because you're going to have to stare at this menu for a while. Okay, first of all, there are th there are three types of random map, random gameplays you can choose. Like when you're playing with random people, there's Free For All, Team Reaper, and Team Objective. Free For All is terrible. Like, I can't go too in depth on, I can't go too in deep in, in deep on it, so just watch another review, I guess. But it is just terrible. You got 11 people shooting at your head. There's no strategy. It's just absolutely insanity. There are all the modes suck in that. So at first, I was talking with Link's Apprentice saying, Okay, dude, I'm, I think the online is hopeless for this game. Then he told me to try the other two modes, Team Reaper and Team Objective. I tried Team Objective... I don't really care for it because I don't like objective-based online games, so that's just me. But then I try and Team Reaper, which the teams are split into two teams of six, obviously. And it's just playing the normal game, but it is so much better. Because the, level, the stages are split into like one base is on one side and one base is on the other side. There's much more strategy somehow. And also there is... And also... What was I about to say? And also, there's way less people shooting at your head. So yeah, that's what I think of the online. But the, for, as for like the normal free-for-all online, just the online in general, like Team Reaper was sort of fun, but the problem with it was very lackluster, seen it all before in Water Warfare. Like, trust me, you're not going to be missing anything if you try, decide to download Water, for, Water Warfare. As for the campaign, which I was just talking about before, very nice. I really like the campaign. It's got a, it's got some really cool stuff I like about it. Some pretty epic moments. Like, not really epic, just kind of exciting. Like, nothing epic. Like, a nuke blowing a plant. Like, a nuke... Okay, never mind. I'm not going to make a reference to Call of Duty 4. So, yeah, anyways, the campaign's definitely the big draw for me, like Surgeon X. Now, when the extras here... Because I was ranting on the online, but anyways... So yeah, you can just check your stats and everything. We got multiplayer stats, weapon stats, enemy stats. So yeah, kind of cool stuff. You got promotional code, credits, and unlockables. Promotional code is pretty much just a cheat code, really. If I can get out of here, okay. Credits are just credits. Unlockables are where some cool st stuff come in. So there are achievements. And no, these aren't like Xbox Live achievements. So you got game achievements, which it says page one, even though there are only three achievements here. Mission achievements, which are achievements for the missions. Normally they're just complete and find the secrets. Actually, I think they're all just complete and find the secrets. Well, some don't even have the find the secrets. Weapon achievements you get for killing a certain number of enemies with a certain weapon. Kind of stupid. And enemy you get for killing enemies. Pretty lame stuff. Like, I don't really care. Concept arts. You get, there are these things called data discs, which you gotta scan with the ASE all over the place. And they unlock, and the more you find them, there are 60 of them in the game. And for every 10 you get, you get another gallery seat. So if you get 10, you get a gallery 1, 20, gallery 2, so on and so forth. Yeah, just ignore the shading thing. Nothing, they're just kinda some cool concept art. Not a whole lot there, but would have been nice if they gave us some character models. And then there are cheats. Now only three of these cheats you can actually get by entering a promotional code. And that's ASE, Model, and Drone. Pretty much all this does is give you an extra model for the multiplayer mode. ASE is just a different looking ASE. And Drone lets you play as a drone for the single player, which is kind of cool. I don't know what this third one here does. You get it for, you get it for finding all the secrets in the game, but... The one you actually unlock, you get stopping power, which is kill any enemy in one hit. You get it for completing the campaign. And fully stocked, which is what you get for... For... Sorry. Which is what you get for killing, like, I think a thousand enemies or something. 
So this is kind of my overview of the conduit. I'm not really going to... Oh, okay. I... Sorry about that. I forgot that. It continues it. Yeah, I thought it... Damn it. So yeah, this was sort of my quick little overview of the conduit. Actually, I'm not even going to call it a review. I'm just going to call it overviews from now on because that's what they are. So yeah, I'm just showing you the extras and whatnot and hopefully mentioning stuff people didn't have talk about like everybody's talking about the control so I didn't want to go too in depth in there. Like everyone's gonna mention the online so why should you watch this review? So yeah, that's pretty much all there is. Sorry this was very unorganized and rushed, but you know, just gotta get it out soon. Okay, that's about all I have to say for now.